Hello. One of my big hobbies is playing the guitar. Oops. So, several hours a day, I'm banging away on this thing. When I first started, I was desperate to become like the super guitar heroes that we see in, on TV or in concerts. And I found courses called How to Master the Guitar in Seven Days. Or I even found one called How to Play the Guitar in Five Minutes. And being as impatient as anybody, I got hold of that course and found, well, I learned to play the Star Spangled Banner. Hmm. I was a bit disappointed, but being realistic, it was true. I did learn to play the guitar in five minutes because I was playing something. It certainly wasn't mastery, though. And when I go into guitar, guitar learning forums, I see people constantly saying, what's the quickest way? We all are in such a hurry. What's the quickest way to master a guitar? And quite often, the seasoned guitar players will say, it takes years. And one of the books that's often recommended, it's a very good book, Solo Guitar Playing by Frederick Node, quite a slim book. And in here, this very well-respected guitar teacher says, with dedicated daily practice, you can be playing the guitar quite well in just two years. Well, my heart sank when I read that, particularly when I then discovered there's a volume two, which requires another couple of years of effort. And now it's been a couple of years, now I'm getting to be better with the guitar still. Not good, but better. And I'm reminded of this when I look into the language learning community. I belong to a forum and I watch polyglot videos. And I admire very much these well-regarded high-level polyglots such as um, Richard Simcott or Luca or Professor Argelis and others. And these aren't just people who've dabbled in a few languages. Anybody can dabble for a few weeks in a language and get the early pleasures from it, but these particular people have reached high levels of mastery. And to reach high levels of mastery is a whole different ball game. It requires years of effort. Now, we all want to rush to, to mimic their achievements, but there isn't a way to rush it. Sure, we can mimic it, we can learn some quick phrases, we can get a phrase book and study it for a week, and learn to have very basic conversations. The difference is, when we meet a native speaker of whichever languages we're studying, that native speaker will have to adjust their own way of talking to come down to our level. We wouldn't be on equal terms, you know? If you want to be on equal terms, that means mastery. Absolute mastery. Now, what is mastery about? Do these polyglots have just raw talent. Oh, he's just naturally good with languages. It's very easy to dismiss them as being just naturally good at languages and we're not, you know. Same with guitar playing. He's just really good at the guitar. Well, it turns out that in anything that involves ability, apart from something that's entirely based on physical power, um, world champion sprinters or world champion weightlifters, they have it turns out, genetically different body structures, different muscle fibre com compositions from most people. They are, in a sense, genetic freaks. And it would be impossible for somebody without similar freakery to ever achieve their levels of physical power. But in everything else, chess playing, languages, um, playing the guitar, even being a doctor, you'd imagine being a doctor is to do with IQ, but it turns out the best doctors, it's got nothing to do with IQ. It comes down to a lot of hard work over a very long time until they master the subject. Now, don't just take my word for it. What I'm saying is practice makes perfect. And it turns out that this isn't my idea. There's something called the 10,000 hours rule, which has been very well researched by many, many people over several decades. I'm going to put a couple of links to a paper that you can read online from the Harvard Business Review and a popular book, both of which talk about this concept in great detail. They expected that they would find out what the natural talents were for these, for people who were at the top of their field in music, in any, in chess, in anything, and they found they didn't have any exceptional natural-born talents. They just worked hard from when they were tiny all the way up 
to into their adult life, hours a day forever. Now, if you think about it, 10,000 hours is a lot. It's three hours a day of practice, and I don't just mean messing around, I mean serious study, for 10 years. Or, if you can put more hours in and you haven't got 10 years, how about six hours a day of energy sapping effort for five years? Or if you don't have that amount of time, you can only spare an hour a day. Well, that's every single day for 30 years. If you want to learn a language and you can put an hour a day for 30 years into it of good hard effort, I reckon you'll master it. But not many of us are going to do that. And also, people say, that's rubbish. My brother moved to Germany or wherever. And a year later, he could speak German. Well, I bet he could. There were many people that couldn't, but I bet if he applied himself during that one year, he could. But I would be very surprised if he was speaking on a parallel level with a native speaker. More likely, he just spoke German quite well. And that's because of something called the Pareto Principle. Now, Pareto was an um, economist, and it turned... This is a long time ago, but his principle has been applied to many areas. And it's known as the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule says you can get 80% of the reward from 20% of the effort in just about anything. So if it takes 10 years to master a language, you can get 80% of the way there in two years. Same with the guitar. If it takes five years to master the guitar or 10 years to master the guitar, you can get there in a, in a fifth of the time to an 80% level. And this explains why there are, for example, government courses that offer 2,000 hours or so of exposure to a foreign language to get you to basic fluency. Diplomats, for example, will be training in Russian or something for 2,000 hours and then sent overseas. Six hours a day for a year and then sent abroad because 80% is enough to get them started. They aren't going for the native level proficiency yet. They've got a starting point. To get to native level proficiency will take them another nine years or eight or nine years or something like that. Now, realistically, none of us or very few of us, have the energy of enthusiasm to put in those years and years of study for hours and hours a day. We want the quick results. We, we will settle for 80% or less. But don't kid ourselves. I don't kid myself that I'm going to reach the lofty levels of some of these polyglots unless I up my game. Because most of us, to be honest, lust after the results. I do enjoy language learning. I really do. But... You've got to absolutely love it to become, to absolutely master it. And this hit me by a quote from a very good jazz a pianist who was asked for the secret of his success. And this is what he said. Michel Petrucciani. Every hour I'm at the piano feels like a minute and every minute I'm away from the piano feels like an hour. And that is a secret to how to become a polyglot in, in minutes, not hours, months or years, is to absolutely love it so that studying isn't a chore. It isn't a task you want to get out of the way so that you can reach that fluency you lust for. No, lust fizzles. But if you love the language, if you love the language learning process, those hours, those months and those years, they'll fly by and it'll feel like minutes. And that's the way to quick fluency. The way to quick fluency is to fall in love with the whole process. To even alter your life, to change your job, to find the spare time, to do whatever it takes to be able to do your, the thing that you love, hours a day, for years and years and years, but for it to feel like minutes. Thanks a lot.